Hi everyone. Um, we're all stuck at home in the early weeks of the um, coronavirus lockdown. We might be here for a while. Um, I have a lot of games on my bookshelves. I haven't played a lot of them for a long time. And Russ asked me to show you Sea Strike. So that's what I've laid out today. Um, I think Sea Strike is the oldest game I own. It's certainly the the first war game I ever owned. I bought this when I was still in primary school. It was published in 1977. Um, and it's actually a pretty good game. It's it's slick and quick to play, but it's um, it's it covers quite a lot of depth. So the idea is that um, you have two sides, each represent the forces of a minor but technologically well-equipped navy in the uh, Cold War period, and there's some kind of regional conflict happening. We have four geomorphic boards, which you can arrange in any combination, um, any arrangement. They suggest arranging in this sort of staggered S shape. Each side has one home board, um, and then each side has a budget to buy their forces with, uh, and then secretly arrange them on their home board before the home boards are put back, uh, connected with everything else. Now, there's, it's a fairly simple game, but there are a few components for it. There's the rule book, the map boards, ship counters, um, this deck of cards for working out damage and range rulers. And unfortunately, over the 30 years I've owned the game, I've lost some of those pieces. So I, I've lost all the blue ship counters, which is a shame, um, but I have taken some red ship counters and a marker pen, and now I have blue ship counters. I've lost the range rulers, so I've had to make my own out of paper, but luckily Board Game Geek had some very helpful photographs of the range rulers with a ruler next to them, so that was quite easy to replicate. Um, and you need a Chinagraph pencil, which is a thing which it was relatively commonplace to own in 1977. But luckily, we bought approximately one million of those for Wing and a Prayer, so I still have a load left over. Uh, if you don't have a Chinagraph pencil, then uh, permanent marker pens or OHP marker pens will do absolutely fine. Now, ships in Sea Strike are represented by counters, which look a bit like this. So um, this is a, a small fleet. We have a general purpose frigate at the top, three light frigates in the middle with slightly different armament, and then a missile patrol boat at the bottom. You can see there are symbols on each ship. Those represent the different weapon systems, uh, which can be destroyed as the ship takes damage, and describe what the ship can do in a turn. Looking at one of those in a bit more detail, this is a general purpose frigate, the biggest ship which we'll use in this game. Um, the pointy end at the front is the bow, and going from bow to stern, there's a square with a line on the top at the front. That is a gun system. That's quite good for shooting other ships, patrol boats, and also shelling shore targets like shore batteries. Behind that, circle with a cross in it, is a point defence system. It's quite versatile. It can shoot down helicopters, it can shoot down missiles, um, it can even hose down missile patrol boats that get too close. Behind that, a square with a dot in it is what's the fire control system, but it's the it's also the location of the ship. We measure all distances from the dot in the centre. Behind that is the funnel, which represents uh, the machinery. So if that gets damaged, the ship will slow down. Uh, the triangles behind that are anti-submarine weapons. They're quite short-ranged. Um, probably something like uh, rocket mortars or something. There are longer range versions of those which have a tail. Behind that, the square with two spikes by it is a surface-to-air missile launcher. Behind that, the box with uh, a cross and well, with box of two dark triangles is a surface-to-surface -surface missile launcher. There's two versions of that. This is the long-range one. The missile boat has a short-range one, uh, which doesn't have the shading. And then behind that is a helicopter pad on which we can launch a helicopter. So we have two sides, red and blue. Each side has a budget of uh, 50 million pounds, nominal, to spend on its forces. Blue has gone for a fairly conventional naval force, um, a frigate and three light frigates backed up by a missile boat, uh, a helicopter for the frigate's flight deck, and a pair of multi-role strike aircraft, which are held off the board. Red has gone for a, uh, a slightly more unconventional um, uh, force, split between defensive anti-ship missile shore batteries and offensive forces for uh, missile patrol boats and two submarines, one torpedo submarine and one missile armed submarine. Uh, again, they have two multi-role aircraft held off the board. Both sides have taken their, their forces away, uh, placed them on their home maps, and come back ready, set up to play. Red's set up very aggressively. We've got the missile boats uh, forward. The 
the two pairs of missile bases covering these two choke points uh, on the approach to their base. Their base back here, which if they lose, it's game over. Um, and their submarines are represented by these submarine blanks. So we have two submarines, but we have four blanks on the board. So two of those are fakes. Uh, one of them has an M on the bottom for missile submarine. One has an, a T on the bottom for torpedo submarine. Um, both sides get their, their home base for free. If they lose that, they lose the game. Or if they take uh, losses from their, their fighting forces uh, equal to half their procurement value, then they also lose the game because they've, they've lost too much in the way of forces. And that tends to be how the game is decided. So with everything set up, we're ready for turn one. The turn structure is very simple. There is a movement phase. Red goes first on turn one, so red moves all their units, then blue moves all their units. And then we have a firing phase where red shoots one unit, blue shoots one unit, and we alternate back and forth. Shooting is all determined by these cards, which are very nifty, and I'm really glad I haven't lost them. So uh, let's start with movement. Red moves first, and red is gonna be really aggressive. So we take our range ruler. Um, this is very simple. Missile patrol boats and ships can go this fast, uh, they can go a bit slower if they're turning more than 90 degrees. They can go slower again if they're damaged. So the missile patrol boats are going to race out into the open. Everything drives in a straight line. If you want to manoeuvre around islands, that will take you multiple turns as you go slowly. And the submarine blanks manoeuvre as submarines. Now ships can wind up touching other ships, but they can't wind up overlapping other ships unless they're submarines. You can always overlap a submarine for obvious reasons. Now the, the areas off the board are considered non-navigable, so ships can't go through them, although helicopters can fly in them. So it is possible to have helicopters off the board, uh, but still being useful and still potentially able to be shot at by things on the board, which is a weird rule, but I kind of like it. Uh, so very aggressive movement of Red's missile forces. Um, uh, so that's all of Red's stuff moved. Now it's Blue's turn to move. Um, Blue's missile boat could go a very long way, but is not going to. It's going to push forward and hide behind that island because missiles can't go across. Actually, maybe, no, maybe it's going to push forward this way and hope to get a shot off at the, the Red missile boats. Um, to protect its uh, its fleet from them. Now the frigate force again doesn't want to get too close to those missile boats. Uh, they ideally want to hold back and use their longer ranged weapons to their advantage. So they'll push only that far forward. Now it's beneficial for these light frigates to wind up touching the frigate because the frigate has a point defense system. So if someone shoots anti-ship missiles at them, it can defend itself or any other ship that's touching it. So both those ships are going to touch it. And in fact, this light frigate can get all the way up to touching it. So they're a nice tight task force. Uh, there's one unit still to move, and that's the helicopter. Um, the helicopter can go quite a long way. And it's going to go and start harassing those submarines because they're a bit worrying. So the blue helicopter has flown all the way over there, loaded for anti-submarine mission. Both sides have been quite remiss in buying surface-to-air weapons. Uh, neither side has any fixed SAM sites. Um, Blue's frigate is the only vessel that has long-range surface-to-air missiles on, so aircraft will actually be able to operate with a certain degree of impunity. That's everything moved. Now we move on to a shooting phase, and Red gets to shoot first. It's quite a big decision for Red to make here. Oh no, in theory, there's quite a big decision for Red to make here, what shoots first. But actually, the only things that are going to be in range are likely to be these missile boats. So he might as well bang off some shots from those missile boats against the frigates and hope to score an early lucky kill. So this lead missile boat is going to have a go at the frigate. So we place the range ruler from the center token, center uh, marker of the ship to the center marker of the ship, and it is just, just out of range. So that missile boat will not get to fire this turn. 
That's very bad for red because the missiles on the ships have a longer range. So that was red's attempt. Blue now gets an attempt. Um, confident that its ships are safe, Blue's missile boat is going to have a go at that red missile boat. Measure the range. And this time we are just inside range. So we will get to take a shot. The way measuring range works is really simple. On the missile boat, we have two symbols of a square with an X through them. Those are surface to surface missiles. And the range ruler just has a range bracket with that same symbol on. That's the range of surface to surface missiles. So we get to take the shot. The first thing we need to do for each weapon that we're firing is a fire control card. So we turn over a card. There is a circle in the center and we're looking for a cross in that circle. If there's a cross, we can take the shot. Unfortunately, for this card, there was no cross. So that first missile system doesn't get a lock on. Second missile system, we can attempt to lock on again. This time, there is a cross. So the second missile system has locked onto the target and can fire missiles. Now we turn over a damage card to see what effect, if any, they have. Uh, because this is a patrol boat, we only turn over one card. Normally, we'd turn over two. Now, there are four symbols in the four quarters of the cards. We look for the anti-ship missile symbol, which is the, uh, the, the square with a, a cross in it. Um, and the effect this time is nothing. So the uh, missile boat will not, the missiles do not do anything to their target. So the red missile boat escapes lightly. Now red gets to fire again. Red is pretty confident that nothing is gonna be within range, but he might as well try with the second missile boat. Oh, that is in range, and it doesn't cross any mountains. So the red missile boat can now try and sink that blue missile boat. So first missile system, fire control card. Nothing, we don't get to shoot. Second missile system, fire control card, is a red cross. So we do get to shoot, and the damage card for the missile system is a serious damage. And against a surface ship, that slows it down. Against a missile boat or a submarine, that's enough to sink it outright. So we remove that missile boat. First blood to red. But now it's blue shot again. Um, the light frigate and the general purpose frigate have long range surface to surface missiles, so they can now have a shot. And we'll start by firing this light frigate at the back. Grab the range ruler and we'll have a go at this front missile boat. So we're outside gun range, we're outside short surface to surface missile range, but this uh, surface to surface missiles on this frigate are in range, so we will turn these cards over so that they're all the right way up. Turn a card for fire control, system failure. That is an unfortunate uh, thing for anything to draw, and that means that ship's weapons are offline for the turn. Red gets to shoot. Red's got nothing in range, so it comes back to blue. Blue will try and fire the GP frigate at the lead missile boat. So measuring from the dot in the square to the dot in the square, we can see that we are inside missile range. We're out of gun range. So we don't get to take any gunshots, but we do get to engage with our missile system uh, following the same procedure. Turn a card for fire control, looking for a cross. No cross. So the missiles don't get to target. Um, that's everything blue. No, no, that's not true. Um, that's everything red can fire, so blue can fire through its remaining units. It has a helicopter hovering over a submarine. Now I'm going to have to remember how helicopters work here. And of course, I should have done a takeoff check to see when that helicopter took off. I need to turn a card and I need a cross. There was no cross, so the helicopter was not able to take off this round, and in fact, never left the ship. Forget that happened. But we have one more ship with long range um, anti ship missiles, which are in range and can have a crack at those missile boats. So, fire control card, system failure. That frigate doesn't get to fire either. These frigates are not having a good turn. So, oh, 
Uh, and that's all the ships fired. Red does have one more thing it can do. Red has a pair of multi-role aircraft, so it can mount an airstrike. Now, Red being a cheeky bugger, is going to go for the coup de main and attempt an airstrike on directly on the blue command center. So for an airstrike, we have to turn over a card per aircraft to tr see if they can take off. And again, we are looking for crosses. So two strike aircraft, we'll pick them up and we'll put them next to their target. And then one fails to take off, one does take off. So one reaches the target. Now we get to draw two cards uh, per aircraft that arrived. We're looking for red crosses. Two red crosses will be sufficient to destroy the command HQ and end the game. We get one red cross and nothing. So we've done one hit to the command HQ. So we put a, a line through it with our Chino pencil. And well, red is halfway to winning. That aircraft flies home and it can't do anything next turn. Blue also has a pair of multi-role strike aircraft, which it's going to use to try and clear the way for its uh, uh, land forces. Strike aircraft are pretty good against um, uh, shore batteries, so we'll send both of our aircraft to try and destroy this missile battery. Again, uh, a card for each to try and take off, looking for crosses, one takes off. One crashes on takeoff, that's a system failure. So one crashes on takeoff and is destroyed. And the other one reaches the target and we get to turn two cards for it, looking for red crosses. We have one red cross, which is enough to destroy a sand battery, uh, destroy a shore battery. So that is a destroyed red shore battery. And the aircraft flies home and can't do anything next turn. So that's turn one complete. And now we can begin turn two, where blue has to move first. And that gives red quite an advantage because it needs to maneuver its submarines into a firing position. And going sec moving second um, gives it a big advantage there. So blue's gonna keep its task force together again because it's pretty sure that those missile boats are gonna come and have a shot. But if it can get up close, then it can get into gun range. And guns are very dangerous weapons against missile boats. So we'll move quite far forward. Again, keeping everything touching. If everything's touching, we get that sweet, sweet point defense bonus. So that's all the blue units. Blue is going to try and launch its helicopter again. So we turn over a card and we need a cross for serviceability. No cross. The helicopter will not fly this turn. Now over to red. Uh, now red ideally wants to stay within missile range, but stay out of small caliber gun range of those, uh, uh, those warships. And if it can hide in some, uh, if it can hide behind some mountains, so it can only see some of the ships, it can limit how much it gets shot at. So those missile boats are gonna try and be sneaky. And go there. And there. The submarines want to stay out of torpedo, or want to be in torpedo range, but want to stay out of um, short range anti submarine weapon range. And this turn, the entire Red Fleet is moving in to gang up on Blue, which is exactly how it should be done. So that's movement complete for turn two. Um, blue does get to shoot first, so Blue gets to decide what is the biggest threat to it. Now right now it's probably the gaggle of submarines in front of it, but the problem with those is they're not all real submarines, so there's a good chance that if they fire at a sub blank they will waste the shot firing at a contact that isn't really a submarine. So their safest bet is probably actually to shoot at the missile boats. Uh, best risk of killing something early. They can't launch an airstrike this turn because they launched one last turn. So the 
general purpose frigate, which has the most useful weapons. No, actually, the back light frigate will fire at this nearest missile boat. Hoping that they can see it, they can see it past the island, they're in gun range and they're in missile range. It's quite a good situation for that frigate to be in. It's got two guns and an anti-ship missile system. So firing at the first, firing at the um, uh, fast patrol boat, we're firing a gun. Fire control card. No fire control. We're firing a missile. We do get a fire control card. So two cards for damage. And one of those is sufficient to kill it. So red now has to choose what it wants to shoot. It could fire its missile boat um, back at the frigates, but the frigates are all under the point defense cover of, of the uh, general purpose frigate because it's touching the wall and it's got a point defense missile system. So it might just shoot down those incoming missiles. A better bet might be to reveal a submarine and make a torpedo attack because there's no real countermeasure against that. Now, if I can remember rightly, I think D, I think this one of the submarine blanks is a submarine. Yep, I turn it over, it's got the T because it's a torpedo submarine. So we reveal that as a real submarine. Replace it with a submarine marker. And now it will attempt to attack the general purpose frigate, which is the only thing that can shoot down missiles. So we measure range and we are inside torpedo range. That's a bad thing for the frigate. So just as for any other kind of attack, the submarine draws a fire control card and fails to find a targeting solution. Now that's bad for the submarine because it's given away its position now. Um, and there is a good chance that the anti-submarine frigate may have a go at killing it soon. So blue gets a shot again. Um, Blue's fired the light frigate. Um, the GP frigate is probably worth it trying to sink the missile boat. So we'll measure point to point. It's in gun range and it's in missile range. So we have a gun, fire control card. That is an attack. And then we draw two damage cards. That's uh, serious damage, so that sinks the missile boat. Goodbye missile boats. Right, red now gets uh, its turn. Um, red has a pair of missile boats, which probably have a shot at the frigates. Although, no, they don't quite, they're not quite in range yet. So red doesn't actually have anything that can shoot. Um, Oh no! It has a it has a uh, a shore based missile battery because ships can't sail through off the board, but missiles can shoot through off the board as long as they don't go over any mountains, and they're in range. So he will fire at the um, central uh, uh, general purpose frigate. We're firing three weapons, so three fire control cards. So that's a no, a yes, and a yes. So two of the two of the weapons have um, managed to fire successfully. So that's four damage cards we need to draw. Now, the general purpose frigate has a point defense missile system, so it can attempt to use that to shoot down some of these incoming missiles. Now, this is a very uh, simple representation of uh, anti-missile system. Um, we just get to turn two cards and we're hoping for red crosses. Each red cross we get cancels out a, a missile damage card drawn. Unfortunately, we've drawn a pair of black crosses and so the anti-missile system is not effective. What that means is those missiles will draw four cards um, against the GP frigate. A one, two, three, Four. Well, we're looking for um, symbols in the missile corner of the card, and unfortunately that was a miss, so no symbol, a miss, no symbol, a miss, no symbol, and a ship destroyed. So sadly, if, if the missile system had done anything at all, it would have saved the ship completely from damage, but as it is, that strike is enough to destroy the ship and the helicopter, which failed to take off from the ship. So that's 18 million pounds worth of frigate. One million pounds worth of helicopter, two million pounds of multi-role strike aircraft that crashed on takeoff, and three million pounds of missile boat. So um, 
Blue is sitting at twenty-three million pounds worth of damage. Uh, it only needs twenty-five million pounds worth of damage to lose the game. So if it loses anything else, that's game over for Blue. Um, and the only shooting left is Blue's anti-submarine frigate can attempt to try and sink the uh, red submarine. It has some kind of long-range anti-submarine weapon, which has the same range as torpedoes. It's probably Ikara or something like that, because this is a proper Cold War game. Um, so it will go through the same process as always. It will draw a fire control card for that weapon system which is a red cross so that is a, a successful and then we draw two damage cards a miss and a miss so we've done no damage to the submarine unfortunately um, but at least we know it's there now now red does have the option of revealing its other submarine which i think it's going to do because blue now doesn't have any anti-missile anti defense systems and the other submarine is a missile submarine so it's that one that's a bit closer than the missile boats, so it's probably in range. And it's going to try and sink the anti-submarine um, frigate, because that makes sense to a submarine captain. So two missile systems. Uh, fire control card is an acquired and an acquired. So we get to draw four uh, damage cards. That's a nothing. A ship destroyed, another ship destroyed, and another nothing. So that kills the frigate. Well, that's the end of turn two because everything that's fired um, can everything that can fire has fired, and it's time to total up how much damage the two sides have taken. Uh, neither side's had its HQ destroyed yet, so it hasn't lost the game for those reasons. But Red has lost a SAM site, sorry, a surface -to surface missile shore battery. That's four million. A pair of three million pound patrol boats for a total of ten. Um, so it's lost ten million. Blue has lost. General purpose frigate worth 18 million, a light anti submarine frigate worth 8 million, missile patrol boat worth 3 million, helicopter worth 1 million, and a multi role, patrol, multi -role aircraft worth 2 million. So that's 26, uh, 32 million pounds worth of damage. Blue has now taken so much damage, uh, that's over half their procurement cost, that they have lost the game on those grounds. So there we go. That was a complete game of Sea Strike. Uh, I've just straight up played that out. Uh, I mean, it was over fairly quickly, but it can be. It's a, it's a nice, slick, fast-playing game. There we go. I'll see you when I do whatever I do next.